hello welcome to chyas how are you i hope you are doing well so friends as you know that on our channel we are covering the syllabus of upsc civil services and for that purpose we have started multiple series on our channel that target your prelims as well as mains so uh, friends we have 12 series that target your prelims and one series that target your mains and uh, friends uh, what we do uh, what we have done in this these prelims oriented series we have basically divided your whole syllabus into 12 large subtopics and uh, what we do we daily discuss two subtopics and in this manner your whole all of the subtopics are covered in 6 days so this process goes on and on in a cyclic manner and we will continue to do so till 31st may so why the date chosen has been 31st may because on 2nd june is your prelims of upsc csc 2019 and we will end this series only one day before your prelims exam so let's start our discussion friends uh, so today is lecture number 3 of art and culture so let's see what are the questions first question is lapis lazuli is a rich blue semi precious stone sometimes flecked with gold in medieval india it was used in ornaments and official seals where the stone was actually sourced sourced from a java b northern afghanistan c china d western india western ghats india so friends uh, here we have been asked that what was the source of lapis lazuli which was used as a semi precious stone in 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 medieval times and in fact it was also used in ancient times also in uh, during the time of harappan civilization so let me tell you friends that the answer is b that is northern afghanistan so it was sourced from uh, northern afghanistan b is the uh, answer so mountains of badakhshan uh, were the uh, were the mining areas from which it was sourced so this is about your explanation uh, part so today mines also exist in afghanistan and pakistan are still the major source of lapis lazuli and there are also other areas like lake bekal in russia and andes mountain in chile and uh, your uh, italy mongolia united states and canada also so this is about your first question let's move on to the second question second question is what is common between latina famsana shikhari and and vallabhi uh, a they are places visited by buddha during his lifetime b all of them host prehistoric caves made during pleistocene age c they are styles of temple architecture of northern india d none of the above so we have to choose that uh, what these places are uh, what is common between these places let me tell you friends that the answer is basically these these are the styles of temple architecture that was prevalent in northern india so the answer would be c they are they are the styles of temple architecture of northern india so this is your explanation part so there, there were basically four main styles that is latina famsana shikhari and vallabhi that were prevalent in in this and uh, uh, that that were prevalent in india so now uh, even now they are prevalent let's move on to the third question third question is the major uh, the material used in the school was the spotted red sandstone this school art reached its peak during gupta period in 6th or 7th century the art school was a gandhara school b mathura school c uh, pahadi school d vaishnav school so here we have been asked that which of the following about which of the following schools we are talking about let me tell you friends pahadi school can't be an answer because it became prevalent only after the after the year a decline of mogal empire so the answer here is uh, uh, this mathura school so the b is the answer answer uh, mathura school basically gained uh, popularity during it reached its peak during the time of guptas so actually gandhara and mathura were the two important schools they they that that uh, that flourished during the uh, reign of kushan emperor kanishk and after that after that mathura school uh, became famous and it used basically red sandstone and uh, and uh, it 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 this school uh, school in, include the uh, images of buddha bodhisattvas vishnu shiva yaksha and yakshinis jinas extra so for the first time uh, the the, uh, the images of hindu gods and goddesses were were made by this the mathura school basically it was inspired from uh, gandhara school of art which made the images of, uh, of sculptures of uh, uh, lord buddha and bodhisattvas so it it got in, uh, influenced by this school let's move on to the fourth question fourth question is which of the following differentiate between buddhist rock cut caves viharas and chaityas so we have to choose that what is the difference between them uh, first viharas generally contain relics of buddha chaityas do not second uh, viharas were constructed for shelter uh, chaityas were used as prayer halls 
so which of the above is correct so we have to choose that which of the above is correct let me tell you friends that uh, first is not the answer first is incorrect uh, certainly second is correct because uh, viharas were the places which were were the uh, they, which 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 provided shelters to the buddhist monks so uh, the chaitas were actually the prayer halls and uh, the viharas do not con uh, uh, do not contain this uh, uh, relics of buddha and the chaitas may contain so in chaitas they are basically prayer prayer halls of uh, in which stu uh, stupas are there uh, so uh, the the in uh, basically stupa is that thing there in buddhism which contains the relics of buddha so chaitas do contain these relics but no uh, various viharas do not contain and viharas basically are the uh, kind of uh, residing uh, uh, kind of residing places we can say uh, they were constructed for shelter purposes so answer is uh, here that is second only so this is the explanation is here solution is b so here is the same thing that i have told you you can see it in detail so there is nothing uh, much here which we should focus otherwise it would waste your time let's move on to the fifth question fifth question is if you stroll inside the ajanta caves you are likely to find which of the following famous images sculpture there so here we have been asked that if we go into the ajanta caves which of the following famous images or sculptures we will encounter there first mahaparinirvana of buddha second shiva slaying andaka and wedding of shiva third padma pani and vajra pani for trimurti gandhara and ardhanarishwara so here we have to choose that which of the uh, in which of the uh, basically things that we will see in uh, ajanta caves let me tell you friends if you know about this that ajanta caves are primarily focused on uh, on buddhist themes so certainly first is correct mahaparinirvana of buddha is there shown in scenes and also the images of padma pani and vajra pani are there uh, padma pani and vajra pani were the basically the buddhist sattvas in buddhist religion so the answer is 1 and 3 and the second and fourth are found in basically elephanta caves so the answer is 1 and 3 only that is c so here is explanation so mahaparinirvana of buddha on the uh, asal right asal wall and the salt of mara during buddha's penance uh, adorns the same wall so this uh, this is basically uh, shown in your ajanta caves but the this uh, the elephanta caves they contain uh, the, your uh, the, the wedding of shiva and other things so this uh, this basically it is described as the masterpiece of gupta chalukyan art so the carved panel facing this one is a two uh, two level depiction of uh, ravan lifting kailash this is about your uh, statement let's move on to the next question sixth is in the tribhanga posture depicted in many famous ancient sculptures uh, we have to consider the tribhanga posture what is it so a the dancer turns his head towards her peers in alternate clockwise and anti clockwise fashion b head is inclined to one side while the upper and lower body take opposite directions to each other c dancer performs on a metal plate which touches one third of his feet at any given time d body stands gracefully with weight placed on one leg in a meditative portion uh, posture so we have to choose that what what is tribhanga posture let me tell you friends that the answer is basically b so head is inclined to one side with the upper and lower body take opposite sides so solution is b here i have included uh, the this your uh, 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 image also so you can see this is a bhanga posture in which only there is a slight bend in the body and this is some uh, some uh, some bhanga posture in which there is complete alignment and then this this is also some bhanga posture in which there is complete alignment but uh, tribhanga is kind of highly flexible posture and this tribhanga is you can see head here to the towards it is it is uh, it is uh, it is heading towards uh, one side and the body has uh, uh, one part of body is inclined towards northwest and one is inclined towards northeast so this is about tribhanga posture let's move on to the seventh question seventh question is consider the following uh, matches of famous paintings with the locations they are found in a chitra chitra hall jain monuments uh thiru thirunadikara caves second gajendra moksham krishnapuram palace kayakulam and uh, kayamkulam and third is anantha shayanam uh, palikurup mahavishnu temple so we have to choose the correct let me tell you friends that first is incorrectly matched it is not uh, basically tirun uh, it is not in tirunadikara caves it, it is basically uh, you are it is in tamil nadu uh, the, you are uh, this kanyakumari it is in kanyakumari so the first is incorrect but the second and third are correctly matched so the solution is c so this is about your explanation so chitrahal jain monuments are the ruins of jain training center from the 9th century ce on uh, your this 
sorry friends uh, on a small hill in chitra uh, uh, chitharal village kanyakumari so this is about your explanation so liberation of gajendra is a puranic legend from 8th skanda, 8th skanda of bhagavata purana and in this episode vishnu came down to earth to protect gajendra the elephant from the from the clutches of a crocodile which was killing uh, which was about to kill this uh, elephant and this, after that uh, the the, uh, the this elephant uh, that is known as makra uh, sorry gajendra uh, attained enlightenment it attained a moksha or salvation so this is about your a uh, seventh question let's move on to the eighth question eighth question is consider the following about chahu dance first it is a martial arts dance performed exclusively by men second it is a major cultural symbol of the eastern himalayan hills third bhulia and host tribes are associated with this dance form so we have to choose the correct answers from the from the codes uh, below so let me tell you friends uh, that uh, here it, uh, this year uh, the statements 1 and 3 are correct basically this is a chahu dance that is exclusively performed by men and bhulia and host tribes are associated with da da uh, this dance form so it is basically uh, the answer is c 1 and 3 only so this dance is basically prevalent in area where the triangular uh, there is triangular meeting point of bihar bengal and odisha so this is about here the tribal belt of india home to tribal groups of bhulia uh, this tribal belt is basically home to bhulia santhals mundas hos and ruan ruans So let's move on to the next question. Ninth question. Ninth question is: Dri is a agriculture. Dri is a agricultural right and fertility festival of uh, a Nyogmas, B Lehris, C Shiox, D Aptanis. So friends, this is a question from your uh, this. Uh, 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 the, uh, the festival part and uh, here we have been asked that this th this is basically associated this uh, this uh, uh, right is associated with which of the following tribes let me tell you friends that the answer is d that is apathni so they are basically tribe uh, which uh, which uh, celebrate this uh, festival so basically dri mean it is derived from adiri which means purchasing or borrowing of food items when in scarcity or add to the existing stock in the anticipation of lean days so dri is named after devi pilo a month in apathni calendar so this is about your ninth question let's move on to the 10th question 10th question is consider the following statements about indian temple architecture first this trend was started by chalukyas of badami second it was essentially a mixture of nagra and the dravida style third it was further refined by rashtrakutas of Man manya khet so we have to choose that the above refers to let me tell you friends that uh, this uh, rep, uh, this this style of if if you know about little about your uh, this uh, temple architecture then you will be able to answer this question by a single statement that is second statement so it is basically the uh, the mixture of nagra and dravida style is called the visara style temple architecture and it was started by chalukyas of badami and uh, and it it was further refined by rashtrakutas of manya khet and then uh, it further reached its zenith under the hosalas hosala dynasty so the The, the, this this refers to the visara style of temple architecture so the solution is b so here you can see the diagram i have included the diagram so you can see this uh, nagra this is nagra style this is dravida style and this is visara style which is a mixture of nagra and dravida style nagra uh, style of temple architecture is prevalent in northern india and dravida style is prevalent in southern india and visara is a mixture of uh, this nagra and dravida style of temple architecture So this is all about friends today's lecture if you like the questions if you like the video then please ensure that you do hit hit a like and please subscribe to our channel and do not forget to press the bell icon because then only you will get all the important notifications and lastly friends if you want to subscribe to the pdfs of these mcqs you can contact us at this email id that is achieveies21 at the rate gmail.com or you can contact us at this number that is 8968426481 so this is our contact number so uh, in case you want to subscribe to the pdfs you can contact us on this number or this email id so friends certainly there will be minimum cost uh, of these pdfs which we will charge but certainly it is kept as minimum as possible for the purpose of your affordability and our motivation because we also have to sustain ourselves and uh, friends uh, why these pdfs are important because at the end of the day you will not be able to revise your whole syllabus by relying upon uh, uh, your videos that are 20 to 25 minute longer for that matter reading standard books or ncrts because at that time you will have to revise multiple topics and that will not be a time in uh, at the uh, on uh, in which you can you can read your standard books or ncrts or for that matter uh, waste your time by seeing long videos at that time you must have some kind of notes from which you can uh, revise your uh, syllabus com comprehensively so these pdfs are designed in a manner that they cover your syllabus comprehensively and they cover your whole topic not only your one question it covers your whole topic 
in this manner these pdfs will help you in quicker revision and uh, in clearing of your concepts so this is all about friends today's lecture if you like the video then please ensure that you hit a like thank you friends have a very nice day